Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational. As we continue on day two of this international event, we would like to bring attention to the victims of the recent Nepal earthquake, who are struggling to rebuild their homes and communities in the wake of last month's devastation. If you'd like to contribute to the relief effort, we encourage you to visit internationalmedicalcorps.org or head over to the Lolly Sports Facebook page for more information. Now let's turn back to our second game of the day where Team Solo Mid is about to take on AHQ Esports. TSM need to win this if they want a real chance of making to the bracket stages this weekend. Yeah, and TSM, they had a very underwhelming performance yesterday. Very crushing, actually, and a lot of that was off the back of Santorin. Santorin had almost no pressure in these games. Dyrus was getting camped, and it really wasn't Dyrus's fault that these things were falling by the wayside. He was trying to apply pressure, but his team wasn't feeding him the appropriate information or resources. So Santorin needs to step up today, especially against Mountain, who has been camping bottom lane over and over and over again. And that's the test here, is TSM is going to see this strategy coming, and can Mountain continue to work on his typical method of operation here? Right now, I'm really loving this team. I'm particularly the top laner, Ziv. You know, we looked at, at his play in the LMS and we're thinking, not that good, you know, a little bit underwhelming, but he's held up against every top laner he's faced so far, and he's making changes game to game. So the first time we saw him in the Narvis Hecarim matchup, he went with a poor item selection. Then the next game he faced off, went for the actual correct one. So Listen I really to us. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, we're watching the game, we're analyzing, take some notes. But uh, I think that they're probably going to go with a similar matchup, and I don't think that Mountain applies that much pressure to the top side. We do see him try for the first minute of the game, but afterwards, Dyrus isn't the one to pick a Cassiopeia top. So it's probably going to be a farm, farm matchup who's got the better teleports, and who is better in the mid lane. Yeah, I actually think that whilst the top lane and bottom lane is important, the person to watch in this match is Bjergsen. He has the highest CS up at 10 minutes by about 19, but he's not able to get around the map. He needs to get out of mid lane, if anything, and try and help his side lanes carry. We've seen that they're trying to secure vision and get around there. The danger is, though, is that Westor plays as these champions that if they leave first, they beat you everywhere. TF, if Fizz catches you in transition, you just die because Westor is that good at soloing people out and will go for the fights. That I think that this game is going to really demonstrate whether Bjergsen can get out and affect the rest of the map or whether he's going to be relegated to farm. And this is also going to be TSM's first blue side game of the tournament. So I want to see what blue side strat they have and what they first pick here. Because that's going to be really important. Because they can secure a top laner for themselves if three bans come out at Dyrus again. They'll be like, okay, let's not ban any. We get first pick of the litter. Yeah, I do think it's, very, it's going to be very interesting, as you guys all mentioned. The attention to the bottom, mid and bottom side of the map from those junglers while the, the two top laners just swing at each other all day long. I do want to get you guys' predictions, though, going into this matchup. Spawn, what's it going to be? Yeah, so I think this matchup is, once again, control against a I think TSM is going to be able to get ahead in this controlled style game. All right. Crumbs? I'm going to go with AHQ this time around. This yeah, that's risky. You know, the person who last sat in that spot got it wrong. <laughs> they got picked off. Oh, man. Oh, I forgot about that. But uh, this team improves game to game. We did not see the same thing from TSM improving game to game through the tournament. And AHQ has done this before. Last year at Worlds, as the games progress, they keep getting better. I think they're going to show up today, and TSM will do a little bit better, but not enough to beat AHQ. I think you and I are even in prediction score at the moment, so I have to go with the opposite oh. here. i got to go with TSM, try to break away from crumbs here, because I think TSM, they have a great support staff. I think they took all of yesterday after the defeating losses, or the crushes, that they are able to come back and they're like, all right, just focus on AHQ. They, I don't even care if they're focused on EDG that much tomorrow, like later on in the day. They probably put all their prep into this match because this is the one they have to focus if on. If they win, the thing I don't want to hear is like, we only prep for blue side. That's the last thing I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, TSM was very vocal about the, the fact that they think they will go 2-0 today. And according to lolesports.com, and despite the doubting crumbs here, 78% of you still believe in the power of TSM to win this one. And before we hand it off to Riv, Atlas, and Kobe, Team Solo Mid, has not only helped Bjergsen find sustained success in the volatile North American LCS, they have also cemented him as one of the game's most dominant pros. I think we all know that an esports career is not going to be like 10, 15 years. That's why we just try to make the most of what we have right now, and that's why we practice like seven days a week. You have to stay constant at it and you have to do your best. Starting this year was I am Zan Jose, where I had a really poor performance, and I was like, is, is this the end of me? Have I already been? I, I had such a, 
I, I felt like I had such a young career and I was already getting beaten by these new up and coming players from other regions and I was like, damn, is this really it for me? But now I feel like I, I, I practice really hard after I am and I tried my hardest to pick myself back up. The teams that I have been in in Copenhagen Wolves and NIP, I never really felt safe or I didn't feel like the uh, roster was really structured. But then I looked at someone like TSM and their roster was extremely stable. They had a lot of the same players over a long period of time. That's something I wanted. I wanted that stability and I wanted to be a part of something as big as TSM. On the red side, it is TSM with Bjergsen making his appearance in North American LCS. He's looking for the pin set. Can he get it? That's the question. Bjergsen leaves one more hit. That's a great to kill. I knew that there would be a lot on stake and I knew that I could end up coming to TSM and maybe the team wouldn't perform, maybe I wouldn't perform. I honestly didn't have the biggest confidence in myself. I felt like it was a really risky pickup by Reginald, but he felt confident in me and I think that made me feel more confident in myself that a big figure and someone I had looked up to also felt confident in me. For us in the team, it's really about having a solid infrastructure, having good coaches, good analysts that work with us. I think one of the main reasons Loco is such a good coach is that he really respects the player's opinion because he has been a player and he knows how it is to be a player. Loco and I are very outspoken people, so we often end up like clashing. We don't have like huge arguments, but we have a lot of small disagreements. In the end, the only reason we argue, or the only reason that we disagree is because we care so much about the team and about where we're going and we want to win so bad. The spring split is definitely really important. It, it gives you the circuit points, obviously, and if you make it to number one, it gives you a chance to play internationally, and I think getting to play internationally, a lot of people really underestimate that. I saw last year at All-Stars, there was a fun side of it, and there was a really try-hard side of it. I want to go to MSI, and I want to take the whole tournament. If we can ride that wave and win MSI, it's going to give us a lot of confidence going into Worlds, and it's going to show the whole world that we're a world contender. It's pretty overwhelming, to be honest, to get pretty much three MVPs within a month or two. MVP is, is a stepping stone, like sure, it means that I have an achievement and I perform well at this event, but that still didn't mean that we, me and my team took MSI or that we took Worlds or anything like that, because I want to win as a team, I don't want to just perform well individually, and I need to show that I can lead the team as an MVP and win something huge like Worlds. I wouldn't say I feel pressured to get MVP at everything, but I'm definitely not just comfortable with where I am. It's not like I'm going to start slacking off or not practicing as hard just because I got MVP. It's kind of hard to say where I really am in my career, but I like to say that I am in the middle because I had my start where I was a rookie and I had my fair share of like rough seasons and having a team that wasn't really stable and roster changes and things like that. Now I'm in a space where I feel like I'm very comfortable with my team, I'm very confident in my teammates, in my organization, and this is where I want to stay. It's hard to say how far I can go, but I'd like to take it as far as I can. An absolutely awesome story from Bjergsen, and incredibly interesting to see what is battled outside the game by these players, what they fight through, and how they get themselves to this professional level. Now, before we get into Champion Select, let's run down the lineups on the blue side. In this game is North America's LCS team. Team Solo mid in the top lane. It is Dyrus, Santorin in the jungle, Bjergsen in mid, Wild Turtle at 80 carry, and Lustboy out support. And on the red side of the Rift, the representatives of the LMS. It, it is AHQ Esports Club. That's Civ in the top lane, Mountain in the jungle, West Door in the mid lane, and at AD Carry and Elvis at support. This is going to be one hell of a matchup, gentlemen. Both teams obviously very hungry coming out of yesterday's matches. For different reasons <laughs> as well. This is true. This is true. Well, this is a must win game for TSM if Absolutely. they want to move on from the group stages here. So yeah, well, their this, pressure is all on. Yeah, this is the thing, and this will give them the head-to-head -head against AHQ at the same time as tying up their scoreline. So if we get that sort of two-way tie, it'll mean that TSM will go ahead in front of AHQ, which is a big deal here. But if AHQ win this one, they're almost guaranteed a spot in the playoffs, and TSM, it's going to be very difficult for them to get anywhere near it. Absolutely. As we enter into picks and bans, we did hear the analyst desk talking about that top lane. Not mismatch, but the fact that it is going to be about the teleports when it comes yeah. down to it. The top 